Hello again, it's Miss Jessica here, and this is going to be the second half of our video for our Grant Wood project. So last time we drew everything, like you see over here on the side, and we did a basic color wash with our watercolors. So today what we're going to do is we're going to push our values darker, and we're going to use watercolors and color pencils. So please make sure you have those with you today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I would also like us to do is grab uh, a towel as well, because we might need to kind of lighten them up with a towel, just a paper towel. All right, so let's go ahead. I want to show you guys a couple things before we start. So what I've done here is I've outlined everything with a brown color pencil. And that was mainly so you guys can see as we are working today. So if you want to, I, you can totally go ahead and do the same thing if you want to pause the video and outline everything you see with brown. I did brown because black can look a little cartoony, brown's a little bit more neutral, but again, you don't have to. This was mostly just so that you guys can see on the screen what we're going to do today. All right, so we're gonna start with just some color with our watercolors. We're gonna darken things like the clothes, and we're gonna darken um, the house up here, and maybe do a little bit in the background, we're, but we don't wanna do too much because then we can't actually do any of our a color pencil on top. So we just gotta do the things that we won't do too much color pencil on. All right, so go ahead and grab your watercolors and definitely some sort of mixing tray. Again, if you don't have one, I know last time we talked about some of you guys maybe don't have a mixing tray. Um, that's all right, we're not gonna do as much mixing today, but we will just do more straight painting. All right, so I'm gonna start with medium brush today. I'll probably use that for most of the time. Um, and that's only just because I don't, have too big of spaces until I reach the sky. So what I want us to start with is the clothing. Both of our uh, people here have very dark black outfits. So the black jacket of our man and even the dark blacks on our woman's clothes. So we're gonna start here with our man. Actually, you know, now I think I might do my larger brush. Now that I look at it, his clothes are much larger. So when trying to judge on brush size, I always say the larger the area, the larger the brush, smaller the area, smaller the brush. Just Kind of helps me figure that out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now what I'll probably use my palette for is just to lighten anything. Now I don't really want to do too much lightening for his, jet, his like coat here, so I'm going to put a lot of black. So what you could do honestly is just grab straight black from there and go ahead and begin. I might like just a small amount. I'm a, always afraid to go light first then dark because you can always darken it. You can't lighten it. So I'm just going to apply a lighter or a darker coat. Excuse me of paint right onto his jacket. And our goal is to not get these dark streaks. That what happens is it just dries too fast. Watercolor paper doesn't really have this problem, uh, but any other sort of surface might because it's not necessarily meant for just watercolor. Could be a multi-colored surface. All right, so filling in the whole thing, smoothing out. All the edges. Now what I'm going to do is not really grab any more. I'm just going to take my brush, grab your small one if you need to, um, but I'm just going to kind of darken the line here for his coat, kind of the like lapel part, because I just want it to be a, a little darker, not too much. Now for around the pitchfork, I do need to switch brushes. I might even do my small one. I might go back and forth here. And the reason why is because I don't want to go on the pitchfork at all. I really don't. This might even be too late yet. See if I can darken that a little bit. All right, so I do want to be careful too because I don't want it to leave streaks of watercolor. So we just, again, watercolor kind of does its own thing. We just got to be careful. You might have to darken it as you go. Just do light layers at a time, which is what I might have to do too. But again, we really don't want to get in the pitchfork at all. Try to avoid that altogether. And we're going to do a little color pencil work on there too. So if we put watercolor on, it won't let us do that right away. So again, video today for our color pencils. So please feel free to just pause at any time you need to, to work on any part um, that I might move a little bit quicker on. All right, so we're just gonna finish up his jacket. And something to do, so I'm just gonna kind of do a little light layer. Something to do to lighten things is before it dries with watercolors, what you can do is just take some water. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, it just depends. And say I want this little part to be a little lighter, I can just kind of go back over with my water and just kind of move it out of the way. 
sometimes there you go, it's kind of working a little bit. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't like to. Uh, so we just got to try, see what we can do. All right, so I'm just going to continue finishing up the bottom of his jacket. The more layers you add to, the darker it will get. So if you want to start light, build up those layers as you go. If you're afraid, it'll just get too dark right away. I need a little more black in here to finish my jacket. But that's pretty much it for our guy here. He's got to finish this bottom part, but I need a little more water. <clears throat> All right, we're also going to use the same darkness, the same black tone for the top of our woman's dress over here. So when you guys are done, we're going to take the same value here. So again, for me, I just kind of was doing a little mixing with my water to lighten it a little bit so it's not pure black. Okay, so now I finished the jacket. I'm going to move over. I'm going to do the same thing for the top of her, I guess would be a dress. I think she's wearing kind of like an apron over it, but I want to keep this part, her collar, white. I don't want that to become, uh, become gray or black in any way at all. Also be careful around this red brooch because we're going to be using only color pencil for that. We're not going to paint any part of that. Get a little bit in her collar, it's all right. Uh, maybe pretend it's shading, be more intentional than do it on the rest. <laughs> uh, maybe you guys are like, oh man, I don't have a different size brush. Just use the tip of the brush you do have. Try your very best. All right, now for her, the rest of her, this reddish tint that we did, we're going to use a lot of water to lighten our black here. So for those of you who don't have a palette, a um, couple ways I want you to maybe try. Maybe grab a paper um, and see what happens to, uh, extra on here. But you can either apply water straight onto it, kind of wet into wet technique, and then paint a light amount of black, barely any, uh, because then it will not cover all of it. Now I'm not sure how wet into wet works so well with uh, paint already painted, it might not stick as well. But what our goal is, I'll kind of show you. So I really lightened this a lot. It's gonna be more of a gray. And we're just gonna paint it right over. So it's still gonna darken it. So it's still gonna look more black, but the red is gonna kind of show through and it's gonna give it a different value or excuse me, a different temperature. It's gonna be a little bit warmer. Whereas I'd say black tends to be a little bit cooler. So kind of like his jacket, you see, over on that side. So what I'm gonna do real quick, let me try wet into wet, just for those of you who are curious, I am. Here's just water, a little bit of black. Okay, it works. So definitely go ahead and do wet into wet. It might leave a little bit like that little streak there, but maybe that's just part of her clothes. Try it out. All right. So that's gonna be really it for the clothing, the larger parts of the clothing for our two characters here. Uh, we're just gonna keep those a little more simple because we'll push our details in other places that to me are a little bit more important. Now, I always wanna encourage you guys at the end, if there's something I didn't do with the shading, please do it. Maybe let it dry completely and go back and just add a little shading, maybe do a little correcting in any colors. Um, I always want to encourage that with the art, but I'm just going to show you guys a little bit more of a flat, basic, pushing again the values or the shading, I should say, in my faces and uh, some of the more detailed clothing. We're going to do a little bit of shading down here with our color pencil. So I don't want to touch this at all. Keep the pitchfork. Uh, so everything pretty much right now looks really good with clothes. Let's jump down to, or up to, I should say, our house. So I'm going to do a little bit of mixing, but again, if you don't have that, don't worry. Um, grab, you're just going to do brown. I'm going to do brown and black. So I already have a little bit of black here. I'm going to grab some brown, quite a bit, because black's super strong. It's very dark. And what I'm going to do is first we're going to draw a shadow line. It's going to go right from the corner all the way down to about where her neck is. So I'm going to draw it first. I'm just going to use the very tip of this. And that'd be perfect. And then we're gonna paint everything on the inside. Careful going around her head because we're gonna just do color pencil on the hair. We're not gonna do any shading with our paint today on that. 
a little bit on the other side. So grab your small brush again if you need to, but for me, I can just use the tip and I'm okay. We're gonna use the same color. And we're just gonna paint the whole inside from one side to the other, not the roof yet. We're gonna kind of leave that be. We're just gonna paint everything else. So gonna be very careful around the base. This is where um, color pencil outlining with the brown does come in handy if you did that like me. Um, but if you haven't, we'll probably do a little bit of outlining at the end as well. I'll give you guys some tips for that too. And once we do the middle, we're into the same color, just whatever is left over on the right side of your guy here. There might actually not be too much. Maybe your house doesn't go as far over. Just paint whatever is left on that side. And there we go. So most of that part of the house is going to be in shadow because we have our overhang here from our roof, but it just kind of drop off here. Maybe there's a little bit of the sun kind of peeking through. All right, now I'm going to use my same color and I'm going to actually grab my small brush now. Grab a little more of that. And I'm just going to add a line right underneath the roof on the house. And that's just showing a little bit of shading too. You can always push that a little more later. And I'm going to do a tiny bit. So I'm going to use the tip of the brush right underneath the window. I really don't want to do too much than that. Um, if I do too much on the side, it's going to kind of look like it's popping out of the house. So we don't want to look, we don't want it to look like that. And we're going to work on some shading on the inside too. So if you need to mix some more color, go for it. Um, but what I've done here is I kind of made all my lines look a little 3D. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video, um, you can kind of redraw the lines to look a little more 3D. I just went right over, didn't worry too much about um, erasing anything. Because what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna kind of fill in the window area. And what it will leave is the lighter color for the like window panes, or I guess the, the lines within the window panes. So I'm using a small brush, just kind of painting that in. Now, if you don't, uh, if you don't want to outline the whole or kind of make those lines a little thicker, you, what you can do is just paint the whole thing. Just go right over the pencil lines you already have, and we'll just kind of maybe darken those instead of making them a little lighter. So that's kind of up to you. All right, so now we're going to do the roof, and I want a little bit darker of a color. I'm actually going to just fill this in at the top, too, because I can't really see it anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to take my medium, and I think I'm just going to add, I think I want more brown this time. I do want it to be dark, but I want it to be more, uh, I want it to be a different color. I don't want it to be the same as my background. Wow, I added way too much black. All right, we're starting over. This happens, you put too much black. I just kind of transfer it to a new spot, grab more brown. There you go, just kind of keep mixing. Happens a lot. A little more black. All right, so again, I want this to be a little more brown than black. We'll see what happens. I'm going to use my small one again, and I'm just going to start to fill. I'm going to turn this real quick. I'm going to just start to fill in the roof. When we did this one, it was a little red already, so it's going to have a different value. It'll be a little bit warmer, just like so. So this is going to be pretty much all of our paint values here for um, today, and then we're going to move into our color pencil. I want to work a lot with color pencil. So we can add a lot more value with that a lot quicker. Whereas we did only watercolor, it would take a very long time because we'd have to wait for it to dry in between, which is a very fun process because it looks beautiful, but definitely takes way longer than we have time for today. Now be careful by his ear, you might not have so much or maybe you have um, a lot like I do. Now I noticed that mine's a little darker there, so what I'm just gonna do is just go back and add another layer. And I kind of left this a lot lighter along here. I didn't there, I kind of forgot. So what I'm gonna try to do is just take my water and I'm just gonna try to kind of erase it away. Just a little bit, there we go. I might start ripping your paper, so be careful, but kind of got most of it away. And then I'll just kind of take a little, Barely any, and I'll just go over it a little bit so it matches. I want to just be a little lighter, so when I go to shade some more, I'll know where the edge of the roof was. If you don't have that on yours, don't worry. Um, don't even worry about it then, just paint the whole thing. 
All right, so that's gonna kind of be it for watercolors. <clears throat> and we're gonna go ahead and start to move into our color pencils. So push everything aside, go ahead. If you need to, pause the video, grab color pencils, and we are going to begin. All right, so if you wanna let it dry more before you begin, you can. Uh, it's probably the best, I do recommend it, but you don't have to. You could just kind of let it be a little wetter and just not add as much color pencil or any yet, and then we can just, you can always go back and do that some more. But we're gonna start to do our shading. I'm gonna focus on the face first. So it depends on your skin tone, if you want a little darker or a little lighter. Let's see, I'm gonna grab out just a couple that you could use for this. And that's gonna be mostly tans and browns. Now these tan colors are not probably going to show up because they're not as dark. The browns are probably gonna be what we want the most. Um, but I always like to start lighter and get a little darker as we go. I also love this bowl. This is one of my favorites. I do use this a lot uh, when I go to shade, especially skin. Please make sure you're sharpening all these as well. Um, you can just do it into a trash can, or I just have a little plate here. So it's a little, it has to be sharp, otherwise it won't really work properly for color pencils. All right, so our light source is a little more over here on the left side, as you can tell by we're leaving this part. And so the right is going to be a lot darker. So I'm just gonna begin right here with my woman, my lady here, and I'm just gonna start shading the left side of her face. So let me see if that's gonna be dark enough for you to see. It is not. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move to my next one. It's gonna be uh, more of a reddish brown, because it's a little lighter. Sharpen a little bit more. And I'm gonna do the same thing, let's see. A little bit better to see. Let me go ahead and start doing some shading and then uh, see where you guys can tell. Still a little too light, so let's jump to our dark ones. So this is kind of the process of art. You just kind of trial and error, see what happens. You guys might be doing the same thing right now with me. Awesome. So I'm going to turn my paper just a little bit so my lines don't get too crazy. So remember, we want to press very lightly when we use a color pencil. And you don't want to add too many lines. You want to keep everything very soft. All right, so you can see I started right here by her neck. So I've shaded just half her neck. Keep it light. I'm going to probably go darker because I want you guys to be able to see it on the screen. And I'm going side to side as I shade and up and down. I'm changing my direction, but side to side will help show um, that the, it is part of just the neck. Now we're going to wrap this underneath her chin all the way to the other side and just up a little bit. If you outlined like me, you'll see the brown line all the way across the chin, but if you didn't, you'll really just see the shading of the chin, which will look very natural, very realistic. I'm gonna add a little bit more, but this time I wanna leave some of the light skin in the middle. So if this is a little more advanced, if you wanna try, um, this is kind of showing where the, maybe like your neck would be, kind of where your uh, throat is. <clears throat> As I say, that makes me cough. <laughs> um, so if you wanna kind of just do, practice a little shading. If you don't like it, just fill in the whole thing. <laughs> And now we're gonna go back to her face. We're just gonna pretty much shade the whole left side. And for her chin, I'm really gonna bring this all the way curving to meet with that little curved line. It's gonna be very dramatic. I'm gonna bring a little bit of shading underneath her chin, or excuse me, her lips. It's very light. I wanna, I'm pressing hard so you can see, but just keep going really lightly. I'm gonna bring a little up by her nose and then right next to her, the bridge of her nose and under her eye. You can leave a little bit of that skin showing through light because her cheeks will have a reflection of the color. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit darker now so you guys can see it a little more. Um, but the darkest places should be by the bridge of the nose and underneath the chin. Everything else can stay pretty light and then right against the, the cheek here, the chin. Now what's gonna happen, like for me, it's starting to match the color of the house in the background. That's okay, we'll go back, we'll kind of darken some of those things back there a little more. You can always do more color pencil, or you can do more watercolor, just kind of do a little bit more. So I did kind of play around with my colors, so they're kind of peeking through, darkening it a little for me, so I don't mind that. 
We're going to do a little bit on our forehead. This is going to be very light. So we're only going to do half. Kind of like there. And then right above the eyes on both sides. Be darker by the top of the eye and lighter as it goes up to the eyebrow. And then we're definitely going to have to do our eyes on the inside. So we're going to worry about that later. Uh, so just kind of leave it for now. Now let's go ahead and just use the same color for our guy over here on this side. So for him, when we have this line here, this is going to help us shade. So we're going to shade right next to it, just that whole area. I'm just kind of going quick, just kind of getting a couple of layers, about two or three. The more layers you add, the darker it'll get. I'm going to go ahead and just take the color and I'm going to make his eyebrows darker. So I'm going to add a couple of layers in here. If you want to get fancy, you can just draw little hairs inside. You can't really see mine on the screen, but you can try it out. Match the other side. All right. Now we're going to bring it around his glasses again, keeping it mostly on the left side. And these lines here are helping us shade. So you really don't want to go on the other side of that line. Keeping it right against his head, right above his forehead. Let's go ahead and move by his nose now, right underneath his glasses. I really don't want to go inside the glasses because they'll make it look a little bit lighter. There's glass there. We're going to leave a little bit of light on this side just to kind of get some shading. I'm going to add a little bit under his eye here. Not too much, though, at all, really. And it's going on his nose a tiny bit, just on the left. All right, I'm going to do a little bit right up here on his lip, right above it. Kind of stopping when I get to his smile. I'll let those meet, but again, I want it to be a little darker by his nose. And I'm going to do a tiny bit right in between. You can leave some of that light showing. Barely any there in the middle. Now for most of his lip, I'll just kind of leave it, but for right underneath this chin part, I'm gonna really shade that in. There's a lot overhanging there. And then I'll just kind of lightly fill it in a little tiny bit. Because again, that is in shadow, but I don't want it to be super dark. I just want it to be a little bit darker. Now on this side, I am gonna go ahead, I should have a little curve line here. I forgot that on, on mine. We're just gonna shade right underneath that. Kind of bring it up a little bit. He's, he's a little older, so he's going to have some more wrinkles that cause a little bit more shading. And then right here next to his eye, we're going to shade a little bit under those glasses. Not really on his nose, just next to it. And that shading is going to kind of come down and connect with um, this wrinkle line that we added. And you just kind of let that blend with the rest of his skin. It's a little lighter and just kind of blend that out. Not too much. All right, I'm gonna add a little more at the bottom of his chin. Leave a little bit of highlight. Again, however much shading you wanna add, that is up to you. It doesn't have to look just like this. This is just some suggestions uh, for how I'm shading mine today. I'm gonna put a little bit, a little wrinkle here by his face. Kind of just push that, maybe I'll darken this one a little bit more too. Almost looks like he has some hair. I'm okay with that. Uh, but now for his neck, same thing as for her. I'm gonna just shade the left side right underneath there. I want that to get pretty dark, bringing that over a little bit. But you know, men have Adam's apples, so I definitely want to try that technique with her. So I'm going to right in the middle, I want to leave, I'm just going to kind of make it a little fuzzy right now, and I'll go back and straighten that a little more. A little showing. And then I'll just kind of shade it out a tiny bit more than I did for her, because uh, she was turned towards us, but he is not. Add a little more under here. All right, so that's gonna be pretty much it. Maybe let's do a little bit of shading on this side just because his head's kind of wrapping around, barely any, I'm just kind of, and just kind of covering that ear a little bit on that side. So go ahead, if you need to pause, just kind of play around with your shading, you can push it a little more realistic or maybe not add as much, kind of like I'm doing now, I'm doing just kind of a more base, simple layer, but I wanna encourage you guys just to keep going in, um, darkening again the places that need to be darkened a little more or kind of just leaving be what needs to just stay light. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm going to move to the clothes and I'm going to do my farmer's clothes here first. And I'm going to bring in some blues now. So I'm going to take these away, grab blues, dark blues. You can grab a couple, you can do a couple different kinds, maybe even a purple. 
we remember the analogous color, which is purple, uh, we'll start to darken our blue here as well. We kind of talked about that hopefully before, not talking about it now. <laughs> All right, so we did blue overalls and a more of like a tannish white shirt. So we'll get to that in just a second, but I'm gonna again start lighter and get darker as we go. So we're gonna start to show a little bit of folds in the fabric. So what I'm gonna do again is just on the left. I'm gonna go right here underneath and I'm gonna shade. I'm gonna try to leave this little part at the top white. And I'm just kind of shading the edges on the overalls very lightly. And then I'm gonna to start to connect that together and curve it a little bit more. Because this is fabric, there's not too many. Let me get a little dark, excuse me, get the hiccups a little darker here on my blues. All right, so again, you wanna always do lightly. I always will have to just do it a little darker so it's easy to see on the screen. Then at the top of this little line, I'm just gonna do a pretty dark line there to kind of show that I kind of wanna leave it white so that we can tell that's part of his jeans, his overalls. All right, so in the rest of it, we're just gonna kind of keep shading, getting lighter and lighter. So we really don't wanna press very hard at all, doing multiple layers in different directions to cross out our lines. And I'm pretty much gonna fill in almost the whole thing. Um, and I'm letting the paint show through. I'm gonna do a little darker in the bottom corner here. I haven't really moved away from this section of the overalls. And I'm just gonna let that keep, let me darken that a little bit more. Now, if this is all you wanna do, that's totally fine. You can just kind of fill in, it's gonna fill in the rest very lightly. And that would look really great. You can even just keep shading a little bit. But what I'm gonna to start to do is have some fun with my folds of the fabric. So. It's gonna kind of, what I'm gonna do is have it curve down. I'm gonna draw it and connect with this middle part. I'm gonna do that on both sides. Now I recommend you not pressing hard. This is just for me. If you did, that's okay, but we wanna try to not keep it so hard. And then I'm gonna shade the edges. So I kind of see this little tube shape. I'm gonna shade the edges. And I want it to be very dark right next to the fold there on both sides. So imagine if you just like laid cloth down, there's gonna be, I call them a hill and a valley. So I'll kind of give you guys a demonstration. If you were looking flat, or say you're at a tablecloth and you were looking directly at it, it would look something like this. Let me do that with Sharpie so it's a little darker. It would look something like that. So these hills are gonna be a lot lighter and these valleys are gonna be a lot darker. So we're right now shading this part of the fabric for that part in the overalls. It would look kind of like this on both sides. And then this middle would be a lot lighter. So that kind of just gives you an idea of what we're kind of going for. This part is kind of bumping out of his overalls, just like you see right here in the middle, that little tube. So I really want to push those dark on the left and the right. Notice how I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm just kind of focusing on these corners here. So have fun with that. Leaving that middle, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm just gonna leave it white. Again, you can try it if you want to. If not, just go ahead and shade the whole thing in. <laughs> and I'm just gonna let that keep going down. I'm just gonna now just do a quick layer over the whole rest of that on both sides. I wanna keep that my light value in the middle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring that darkness down on the left and on the right. I realize I said that backwards, it's all right. <laughs> and I have that those lines there, and I do want to keep that a little lighter too. So I'm not going to shade that really at all. I'm actually going to go underneath, shade that with it. I'm going to shade just a little bit next to his coat because it's kind of overlapping, so it'll just be a little darker there, but I want to leave the middle a little lighter. Now for the rest of it, I'm just gonna go ahead. I'll leave this part a little lighter, but I'm just gonna start to shade in the whole thing. I'm just gonna fill the whole thing dark. So I'll do a light layer, and then it's gonna kind of come back, shade right underneath, a little bit darker. And then I'm not like pressing super hard and digging into my paper. I'm just adding lots of layers in different directions. So. All right, I'll kind of go from dark to light there. So that's gonna be our overalls for our guy. We are getting, again, more detailed with our color pencils as we can. And might as well, so I think it's really fun. 
All right, so if you wanted to keep pushing it, you could grab your purple um, in those darkest areas, which would be the corners and the sides. You can just really push those values a lot more. We'll just do a little bit to show you, and it'll just look really cool. But you don't have to. So now I'm going to move into this yellowish gold for my shirt here. So I'm going to grab my favorite gold again and yellow. And when I say yellow, I don't mean the bright neon yellow. Try to get maybe a little bit duller of a yellow. I don't think this one has a word, like a name on it uh, to help you, but you're going to notice. Let's see if I have a different. Here we go. This is my yellow. And compared to this one, it's a lot lighter. And that won't really work for me. It's going to be too much of like a neon. I want it to be a little warmer, a little more orange in it. But if you grab this one, it's going to completely turn more of an orange color. So if you have um, one of those, if not, you could just grab orange. That would be fine. But I'm going to try to get mine just a little bit uh, more yellow. Uh, it's still a little orange. <laughs> All right, we're going to do lots of fun wrinkles on his shirt. Now for this, because the fabric's different, um, I'm going to have fun and just be very free with how I'm going to create these wrinkles. So I'm going to take... I'm gonna take uh, my color and I'm just gonna shade the right side of our line right in the middle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of come up here because this is gonna be a little dark at the top corner. And I'm gonna do that same at the bottom corner as well. I'm gonna just kind of work it on the right side. Now for the middle, I'm just gonna start at the top and I'm just gonna kind of create I'm not even like worried if it looks perfect. I'm just creating these like zigzags in the side. It's a little hard to see. So what I'm gonna do is now take my gold, my favorite one, darken it up a little bit. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm only gonna do the bottoms of those lines. Kind of like we did down there with that purple. We kind of brought that in to be a little bit more of a shadow. So there, it's a little easier to see now um, with that gold. And then if you want to, if it's too light in the middle, take your yellowish color. You can just kind of shade the whole thing again. We'll just kind of bring it to more of a, the same value. Now that's super yellow compared to our wash. I'm totally fine with it because I kind of like the contrast with the blue. But if you don't, uh, you can even take an eraser and just kind of lighten it up with that. Um, if it got a little too yellow or a little too gold, I'll just kind of take some of that off of there. Not all of it, because it's color pencil, not regular pencil, but that already kind of did its job. But I have to go a little darker for everyone to see on the screen. So keep staying light, uh, if that helps you a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, but I'm not going to shade this line. I'm just gonna kind of focus right here next to his jacket. And then I'm gonna do those same kind of lines down, maybe not as many, or maybe not in the same exact place, um, but just kind of darkening it. A little more for you guys here. And really, I'm not worried if my lines, my lines are super jagged and imperfect because I think that helps with the look of the clothes. All right, I'm gonna do a little under his collar just so we know that it's there. I'll shade a tiny bit, pressing light just so it kind of brings the color in. And you know, we have, we're gonna have the shadow here so it's gonna kind of drop onto our guy. So what we're gonna do is take our like orangey colors now. Or may, let's do brown, I lie, let's do brown because I don't want it to be orange. We're gonna take a brown, not a black, and we're just gonna kind of shade kind of where that would drop down a little bit on our guy. Just that top corner, even the collar a little bit more too. Okay. Let me darken this part right there. I like how different that looks. So this is, you know, when you go shading things, you're gonna start pushing your values is what I call it. So the darker the value, the more realism, that already, I love it, um, comes into play. So right now we are just doing a lighter wash of color pencil. Look already, I'm loving this darker brown. Wonderful, I could go back and do that on the face a little bit more too. So this is something I want you guys to do, maybe not like during it like I am, but uh, this, the artist in me is kicking in. Uh, but afterwards, you know, I can kind of go around and say, oh, that needs to be way darker. That's way too light. Um, same for my ear here. I might push that a little darker. And that's just going to be on the left of everything. All right, so I'm going to stop with that guy. And so our clothes are pretty much done. But for our lady over here, since she's got her white, it looks too perfect. 
we got to darken our sh our shadows here. So her neck's got a shadow. Her clothes need one too. So I'm going to grab a gray and I'm going to shade that in. Now this gray I know is going to be too light for you guys to see, but I'm just going to start with it so I know, okay, that's a little bit. You can see a little bit. I'm going to bring it over just as far as that shadow would be. And then I'm going to take my black and I'm going to do a very light layer with that. We'll just darken a little, but I recommend not doing the black if you don't want to, but this is just so everyone can see it a little more on the screen. It might just be a little too dark for, um, for you guys. No, wow, I'm really going to darken this little part right in here. And we'll add a little bit here on the front. Because that's not near the line. I'll do a little bit on this side too, just to match. And let's go ahead with the brooch. Grab a brown, or excuse me, a red. I'm going to do this reddish brown, that's why I said that. And I'm going to shade around the edges. Let's see if that shows up on there. Try to grab a dark one. It's a little light, or uh, it's a little small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it again a little bigger for you guys to see on my paper here that I already kind of scribbled on. So I have my oval. Maybe you did another one on the inside. Um, if you didn't, don't worry. You're going to now kind of create that. So you already did kind of our, I'm going to just do a light layer with this. That's with our watercolor wash. Then you're going to take this and you're going to just darken the edges all the way around, leaving the middle light. Um, you know, if this was super close, like we see here, there would be a person inside because it's a brooch. She has that on in the photo. So you would like, you know, draw that in if your person, probably sideways, something like that, long hair maybe even, um, like the face. But since we can't really do that because it's so small, so you're just going to leave the center um, a lot lighter. All right, so for her, that's going to be done. Now, it depends on your paper. Your watercolor may be dry. We could always go back and you could shade a little bit more too. Like for our man here, there'd be a little more shadow on him. You take your color pencil and darken some more. This is right against his uh, little like collar here. I'm going to turn this real fast and I would shade right along there. But if yours is still wet, I recommend waiting till the end um, and not worrying so much about the color pencil. Let it completely dry. Maybe even after class, um, you can see the video. But I'll keep working on some color pencil once we're done, just like you guys, and then I'll post that as well so you can see. But you know, if it's dry now, if you want to do a little bit of that, you can. Same for her. Uh, take the black or even the gray, so it's not too dark. And it's a little overlapping here, so I'm just gonna shade a little bit down. Please, anytime you need to pause the video. For him, I'm gonna darken it a little bit so that way it, it's different than hers. And this would be his sleeve. Here's my line I found again. I'm just gonna kind of shade the whole thing in a little bit darker. All right, let's move to the pitchfork because we're here. We're gonna grab a gray and I'm gonna use my black. Because again, remember I gotta make sure it's different for you guys are a little darker. I'm gonna do a quick layer with my gray. I didn't get a good wash on there with my watercolor, so I'm just gonna take my gray and color the whole thing. If you feel the same way, if you feel like it just didn't get as gray with the watercolors, take a gray color pencil, go ahead. But if you don't have gray, just wait and do the shading with the black. Otherwise, it'll just get too dark and it'll match his outfit too much, his jacket. But the handle member, that's gonna stay brown, so we'll get to that in just a second. Not too much I'm gonna do with the pitchfork, but you could outline it. Um, if you wanted, if you didn't do brown already, you could just take a little bit of black and only really on one side. I'm going to do mine on the right. And I know that's opposite of our uh, light source, but what I'm going to do is then kind of just on this curve, I'm going to darken that a little bit. So something that artists do when they do graphite is, shade that a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you Press hard and you outline the part you want to be the darkest. And then you just leave the rest light. So let's say like here for my, let's say for our, our woman, I'm gonna outline with my black on the parts of her shirt that would be the darkest. And then on the other side, I wouldn't. Maybe I would just kind of shade it a little bit more. And then I maybe would just start shading that. And what that outline does is just tricks the viewer and that to like when their eyes think that that is that saves a lot darker look already 
much, much darker. And all I did was really outline and just a little bit of shading. So that's kind of what I'm doing with our, our uh, pitch board here. I'm gonna just do a little bit more of that, just kind of outlining the parts that I want the viewer to think are the darkest or even like right here with the coat, I want it to be different so they don't see it. Maybe even with the points at the top, if it's a little hard to see, kind of re-outline just that part, especially right here for, for me. I'm just gonna outline this top of this jacket. Already, look at the difference between this side on the right and this side on the left. That looks much darker already. All I did was just outline. Little trick. Um, for the rest of it, you could do a little bit of shading on the left sides if it's not too small. It's a little hard for me to see, uh, show you guys because it is a little smaller. So I'll grab my paper again. So say I have my pitchfork. Let's do a real quick rough sketch <laughs> of pitchfork. Everything is shaded gray. And I did a little outlining. So now you could take your black, just do a quick little gray here, very rough. And you just kind of shade a little bit of your left side in. So you could grab your black now and do just a little bit of shading only on the left. Notice how it didn't even go all the way around. I kind of just let it be. And, and then at the bottom as well. Might be a little bit hard because there might not be much room to do that shading, but just as much as you would like to. Not too much. I'll do a little at the bottom. Now for the brown on the handle, it's going to be very similar. I might just do a, like a wash of the color. Excuse me, of the brown all along the handle. I feel a little bit of that in. And then on the left side, I'm gonna outline just the left this time. And then I'll shade a tiny bit in. Just the left. There we go. Um, now, if you have your hand peeking through, uh, maybe just take your color you shaded with and just do a light layer over it. My hand in this one is not. But again, if you have just the top of it, just kind of shade it a little darker. Don't worry too much about that. <laughs> All right, let's jump to our eyes and her hair. And then all we'll have left is background. And I'm going to let you guys just kind of have fun with that. So I'm not too worried about it being super detailed because it is in the background. Things that are farther away, they get a lot lighter. It's that atmospheric perspective. So it doesn't have to be as detailed as our characters in the front. But let's jump to eyes and then her hair. And then we'll see if we can do a little bit for glasses here as well. I think we can do some fun things with that. Uh, his eyes are brown and her eyes are a little more blue. Now, if you painted over the eyes, you could try to take your white and fill in the, the white spots. It might not work so well, but you're just gonna use your wash as your light part. And then you're just gonna take your color. I'm gonna start with my lightest blue. And I'm just gonna very lightly fill it in, not too much. The whole thing. Then you're gonna take your black and you're gonna do the pupil on the inside. And if you want to leave a little bit for a highlight, I'll show you guys how to do that here real quick if you want to watch. I'm just going to do a quick little eye uh, detail here. So it's going to be something like that. Shaded everything blue. A very quick layer here of my blue. This is a very close-up version. Your eyes might be a little smaller. As you start to shade a circle, I'm going to kind of draw it. I'm doing this lightly. I'll darken it a little bit. And then I want to leave a little bit. And that would be my highlight. And then I would just shade everything in. Kind of the trick to doing a small area. Now, if you could, if it's small enough, you could take an eraser of some sort, like on a pencil that's uh, small, kind of erase some of that blue out of the way so it does look a little lighter. You can go on the black a little bit. Um, if you can, if you can't get it that small, not too worried about it, it is tiny. So if you want to pause and look at that again, you can. But I'm going to go ahead and back to my woman here. I'm just going to do that on both sides. So 
All right, now same thing for our guy. So same technique. You need to rewind and watch how we did that, please do. But his are brown, so I'm gonna take my brown again. Just shade that in. Do mine a little bit darker, just on the edges. You wanna leave, you wanna try leaving a little bit of the eye for the highlight, you can. It might just be a little bit difficult because it is a lot smaller. And then I'll just take my black. For the people. All right. Now, when I'm noticing, I can see in my screen that I feel like her nose falls a little flat. We can't really see it. So what I'm gonna do now is just real quick go back. I'm gonna give her a little bit of shading right here on her nose. I think we had a line there anyway. And on her nostrils, I'm really gonna kind of fill those in. I could do that on both of my characters here. So this is the time too that you would really go back and darken all the areas that we maybe didn't get to yet. Maybe do a little bit more under her eyes. And just this whole half of her super light. There would still be some shading, it just wouldn't be as dark as the other side. So we could add a little bit more shading, maybe right here where her cheeks are, her cheekbones, we'll give her a little shading there. Bring that down a little bit. Maybe right underneath her hair line, there'd be a little bit of shading as well. So you can definitely just go back around and keep working on that. All right, before I forget, let's go ahead and work on her hair. Her hair, I'm gonna keep the brown, and she's got like brownish blonde. So what we're gonna do is right at the part, I'm gonna shade the right, the left side, excuse me, back and forth, all the way. I'm gonna press a little harder so you guys can see. Let me turn it real quick. Just like that. And I'm not keeping my line straight. I want it to be jagged. Think about hair. And I'm gonna kind of bring my lines down like I would with hair. Just a little bit. I'm going to do right here where her twist is in her hair, right above her ears. Same idea, same technique. You can draw a couple lines. Then pretty much I'm just going to do a light layer all the way for the rest of the hair. Her braid though, or this little like, not braid, but a little piece of hair coming through, I'm just going to shade a, shade a little bit of it. Some of it will still stay a little bit more of that blondish color. Now I'm just going to go back. I might even grab a little black now. And I'm just gonna shade the darker parts at the end. Not the whole thing. Just to kind of push that realism. It can't get any darker than our brown in there. So we gotta now move to our blacks, our next one. Let me turn this real quick again. A little outline at the top. And that really shines through there. Then underneath, I'm gonna just do a nice layer of the black pencil. I'm gonna make it really dark next to her head and her ear. Which then, thinking about, we need to go back, just a little on her hair down here. And we need to do a little shading on that ear as well, because it has her hair is kind of hiding it. I'm just kind of put a little inside. I realized we didn't really have that for her. She's got a pretty big forehead. She does in the picture too. So let me turn it real quick. I would even push this value maybe a little darker right here on the left side. Bring it over maybe a little bit more. Okay, maybe do that outline technique right underneath her hairline. A little bit here as well. And we didn't quite do this side yet. So we're gonna take our brown again and we're just gonna kind of shade in most of it all the way to the top. And then go back with your black, really darken these edges here. I might even bring a little more brown in there. I feel like it's a little too blonde at the top. Okay, so that's it for her hair as well. So again, I want you guys maybe even pause, go around, look at your picture. Um, something that is good to do is you hold up your art. Um, so I'm gonna switch it back to, to me here. What you do is you can hold it up in front of you, hold it way out to look at it. 
lean it up against something, um, or just lay down and step back. Stand up, look over your picture. Because what I want you guys to do is I want you to see the the values. Are the, is it dark enough? Did I get it too dark? Do I need to maybe leave that alone and just move on to something else? Another trick that's um, something I like to do in my art is I squint on my art. And the parts that are darkest are gonna show because everything can get a little blurry. I learned that when I went to art school. And the parts you want to be dark, let me flip it for you guys, are his jacket edges, uh, the shading we did here, the face. So my this side's pretty dark, but for her it's not, so I might need to darken some things in here. Really push that in his. He did a lot of contrast with the dark in the faces. So really go ahead and just push that a little bit more add more values, maybe bring in some black, just be super, super careful because it'll get really dark really fast. Like the neck, I probably darken a lot more, kind of like I did when I got my brown again. So that's what I kind of want you guys to do um, before we start on the background. So I would go ahead and pause it if you need to because the next, I'm gonna just go ahead and finish up the background and we'll be all done. All right, so again, you could definitely spend lots of time just going through, darkening everything. If you wanted to pull up a picture of Grant Wood, you could, but again, shading is just gonna be a little different because your drawing is not his, it's your own. So I just want you guys to focus on what yours will look like in your shading. All right, let's go ahead and let's do some of the background. So we're gonna keep it a little more simple, but I'll show you guys some techniques that you can do to really make it pop. So down here on the house, we're gonna add lines for all of the like paneling. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna turn it and I'm just gonna take my brown and I'm just gonna add really thin lines close together. And I honestly don't even mind if they touch a little bit. It's a little hard to see. Let me press a little harder for you guys. But we're just gonna add our paneling all along the back. Now what's gonna happen is as we do that, we already have these lines for our poles that are holding up the house. So I'm just gonna shade that in darker. Maybe let's do that first. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other ones. Now for this one, I'm only gonna do half. The other one's kind of bright. Maybe I'll just press a little lighter and do it a little bit darker. But I want that top part to be the darkest. And then I have one more on this side. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and continue my lines. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Go ahead and finish those lines in the background. We're just going to do the whole underneath part. Um, but for those of you guys who are wondering maybe what about the part that has the light, I'll show you that in just a second. So maybe skip ahead to that if you're ready or uh, just keep going ahead and adding in your lines. Now you would go all the way across the house to the other side. But I'm just going to jump over really quick and show you guys what to do with this part right here. So the top will have the dark brown lines, but the bottom is going to be a lot lighter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a quick little finish here with this. So I would grab maybe a little bit lighter of a color, my favorite gold, let's do it. I'm gonna keep those lines down on our picture. And she looked a little toned. Now, if you don't have the gold color, you could just try to find a tan. Um, mine just won't show for you, guys. It does look really nice. And you could definitely do tan like this one here. Mine just doesn't show up on the camera, the screen here, but tan would look really nice. Maybe do some tan for the outside because it's getting a lot lighter. And then you could do your gold more towards the inside or a little bit darker of a color. Again, I'm really not worried about my lines being straight at all. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly just kind of finish up some of these lines here. And then we're gonna jump up to the roof and kind of do a little bit more shading up at the top. I need to sharpen my pencils. A little bit cool. Okay. That's gonna be the bottom. Now I do wanna just go back to our poles here and address those. Let's take a little bit of a black and we're just gonna kind of shade the left sides. Let's do a little bit of outlining, not pressing too hard at all. Really, just kind of shading that left side. 
Let's do that to all of them. Turn this real quick, just so I can, my line going in the right direction. I am not too worried if it's like a harsh uh, line. I'm not blending it too much there because, so now here's our tricky one, but because it's gonna be brown anyway. So let's just have half be a little darker. Now for this one, you're just gonna take your brown. Do the exact same thing, but just with your brown this time. So we're just gonna kind of darken the left side. Oh my gosh, I keep saying left. I'm so sorry, I'm not right. Gosh, this whole time I apologize. <laughs> left and right is not always so great. All right, so I'm gonna leave that there. Now you could go into more detail. You could add windows, you could put a door, uh, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it there just like that. Up at the top now, let's grab our brown again. We're just gonna kind of darken right along the roof. Do that outline technique and I'm just shading a little bit down inside. And I'm gonna do a tiny bit, something a little bit lighter on the right as well. And then I'm gonna take my black and I'm just gonna press lightly, but I'm just gonna do another light little layer right along there to really push that. You could even take your brown and you could just press very light and have it come out a little bit more on both sides. I'm gonna turn this so I can do that. Just like so. You'll notice more of a difference on yours than mine, but I think that looks very realistic. I'm gonna keep my roof plain because it just pops right in that picture. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of shade in very, very lightly, just a little bit. And then I'm just gonna do that outline and technique on outsides here. Now it is just gonna be on the right of everything. So I'm just gonna go on the inside, a little bit top. Now for the end, if you, if you wanna outline yours, go ahead. But what I'm gonna do is just do the, the right side uh, because of mine, I made it a little more 3D. I do the top here. Do the top space too. Just kind of pushes that a little bit more, that realism inside. You could even create the shadow. So right next to it, you would just redraw very, very lightly kind of what you already did. And it just kind of looks a little 3D. A little harder to see it in mine, um, a little close up, but I'll darken that so you can see it. You want it, and then I'm just gonna kind of shade in a little bit, just in the background, try not to go over, you can go over everything actually. That's fine. All right, now for this part of the roof, I'm gonna take my brown and I'm just gonna outline again if you haven't already. Just wanna darken that a little bit more across the whole top. And I'm just gonna kind of shade the top of it with my brown going down, keeping that bottom lighter. Now I lost my lines over here so I can redraw those in. Pressing, I'm pressing pretty hard with my pencil just to get those on there. Shading that a little more. All right, so we are coming now close to the last end of our class here today. And what I want you guys to do is please keep pushing all of your values more and more and more. There is so much more we can do. Look, I'm even gonna go back now to our eyes. I'm just gonna add the top of that a little bit. There's so much more we could do with this, but for time's sake, um, this is all I'm gonna be able to give you guys for today. Um, for your sky, just the so last little thing, you can grab a blue or a gray. I'm gonna go just a little bit darker. And you can just kind of shade starting from the top, pressing lightly and going down and not even getting to about halfway. Now you will see these lines here. So you might have to add a couple layers um, or you could even just do watercolor. Same thing, take a blue, get it dark, maybe mix, so just take a dark blue and just paint from top to bottom with the dark blue. But you wanna go from dark to light for the top. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. All right, well, thank you guys again so much for everything, letting me help you with the color pencil. The color pencil you can work on for multiple days at a time. So 
I really encourage you guys just to keep working on it. Um, pull up his picture if you need to, and I'll show you guys my final image with all more, a little bit more detail in it as well. But my name is Ms. Jessica. Thank you guys again, and hope to see you guys later.